Hi, um, my name is Paul, and I'm going to give you a five-minute elevator pitch for why Python should be the number one uh, language for open source hardware. Um, so the idea is that, um, I don't know if it's obvious to people or not, or if it's even controversial, but I think that open source hardware is going to change um, the world, just like open source hardware changed the world. And we see this with um, you know, a lot of new um, projects happening in 3D printers, uh, a lot of buzz surrounding that, and the maker movement. Uh, I, I believe we're going to hear a talk from someone from Civic Lab, uh, which will talk about um, hackerspace for civic engagement. So open source hardware, I think, is going to change the world. It, it's an, I think it's the next big thing. And software is going to fuel that. Um, so what's that got to do with um, Python? Well, um, I think, like I said, Python has an opportunity to become uh, the number one language for open source hardware. Uh, it's still early going, so I think we still can, can lead the way. So we know that uh, in other um, areas of computing, uh, there are other languages that are dominant in, in those particular areas. Um, you know, back for back end, there's PHP, browsers, JavaScript, enterprise, Java, uh, phone, Java, all those things. But Python can, can lead the way in open source hardware. So why do I even care if Python goes into this area? Well, I like Python. I love Python. Why? Because of the, uh, the documentation, the community, and the tools provided by Python. Um, I think one thing that uh, has made Python successful um, is our culture of in inclusiveness. You know, the whole, remember that whole um, PyCon controversy and the, the uproar and the reaction t to it um, showed us that we care about um, how we uh, get new members. And we care when, when something um, bad happens to a potentially new member. That's why it was such a controversy, and such, that's why there was, I wouldn't say sensationalized, but I don't think it was an overreaction. I don't think it was an overre overreaction. Um, so the same things that make me love Python um, should be the same things that we use to make it successful in, in another aspect of computing. But how do we make it successful if we don't know what we're up against? So in documentation, we know that um, software um, is predominantly um, put on GitHub, which is a, a Ruby thing. And that, that's fine. Ruby's our cousin. I consider Ruby our cousin. So it's part of the family, <laughs> right? But for hardware, there's really nothing um, for technical doc documentation, I don't think there's anything that Python is offering uh, right now. Um, here are the things that, uh, here are the, the competition we're up against: the Zuki and Instructables. Instructables is very popular for hobbyists, uh, and that's for my research. It's based on Java and PHP. The Zuki is based on PHP. The Zuki is more um, it's like Instructables, but it's more technical. It's more geared toward industry. Um, now. Um, how does Python get into the community of open source hardware? Um, well, in the case of Chicago, we have a hackerspace called Pumping Station 1, and um, the good thing is we have Python office hours and we have NERP meetups, which is Python and Arduino and Raspberry Pi um, project um, nights and sessions. And I think we're going to talk about Civic Lab tonight and um, well, I, I don't know too much about it, but I'm hoping that Civic Lab will have some sort of Python, Python um, involvement. Um, so what are the tools available for open source hardware? Well, um, a lot of the tools for open source hardware, I would say, are probably going to uh, lean toward Arduino and Raspberry Pi. and for, from what I've seen, um, Python is making good uh, headways into that. Like, for example, 
we were talking about Arduino, uh, we were talking about uh, Python libraries. We were yelling out you know, G event and Django, all those different libraries and frameworks. Well, for Arduino, there's a uh, library called uh, Processing, which allows you to, to gather data from, from, uh, from Arduino uh, machines. And Raspberry Pi, I believe Python is doing really well with it. Uh, it's one of the uh, major languages that's being supported, of course. Uh, so let me give you um, a story to end this talk. Uh, so a couple of days ago, I heard about this um, 3D printer that was selling for three for a hundred dollars. I'm like, okay, what? How how does that do that? And uh, why is that even a success? Well. Uh, this printer uses Python to 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 uh, to transform CAD files into waveforms, and then waveforms into uh, uh, transfers those waveforms into uh, a laser mechanism in the 3D printer. So the 3D printer doesn't even need a, a fancy CPU. All it does is, is it takes the waveforms from the CAD file and and then prints the uh, prints the object using that waveform processed by Python. So here's that uh, the printer that I was talking about, and here's that that laser. You see the the laser hitting the resin, and as the resin rises, the rais the laser is uh, um, forming that 3D object, and underneath the resin is the water. So there's no gears. There's no processor in the actual printer. It's just the laser, the mirrors, the resin, and the water that moves up as the uh, as needed. And here's an object created by the printer. Another object created by the printer. So, um, so this gives me hope that Python is ready to take over open source hardware. Thank you. Questions?